Nuremberg assumed from prior experiments that there was an association of ribosomes with messenger RNA. Let's look at initiation. Uh, it turns out that messenger RNA actually binds to the 30S subunit of the ribosome. So here we have a sucrose density gradient. You can separate particles on a sucrose density gradient. Now particles, of course, are much bigger than molecules of RNA. So if I separated molecules of RNA on a gradient that went from, say, 5% to 20% sucrose, if I want to separate particles, which are much larger and more massive, like ribosomal subunits, I'll centrifuge them in an ultracentrifuge on a sucrose density gradient that might go from 10 to 40%. Remember how soluble sucrose is for this purpose. So we have separated here large and small subunits. The two bands, these two brown bands, are different thicknesses because there's going to be physically more of a large subunit material than of the small, even though there is one each in a ribosome, right? Because the large subunit simply has more stuff in it. So there are our two bands, and we can fractionate them, and you can see that the lower band is the bacterial 50S ribosomal subunit, and the upper band, the one that moved more slowly in the gradient, is the smaller 30S subunit. Well, one can do simple experiments, uh, add a messenger RNA, perhaps one that's been made radioactive so you can track it, and add cytosol from E. coli cells and ask if there is an association, and it turns out there isn't one. On the other hand, if you add the 30S subunit, the small subunit, to a radioactive mRNA with cytosol present, presumably to provide some necessary factors for things to happen, sure enough, the 30S subunit can be shown to associate with the mRNA. How do we know that this association is actually taking place? How do you show this? Well, very simply, you take this material and you run it back on a gradient and you show that the 30S subunit where it fractionates in the upper part of the gradient is now radioactive because it's had mRNA added to it. It might even be moving a little faster because the mRNA adds some bulk to this structure. So here we have a picture of the sucrose gradient that shows that the radioactive complex would be larger than the mRNA alone on a sucrose gradient and in fact would be about the size of the 30S subunit. If the two are mixed then they come together. So what is the role of the cytosol? I keep talking about adding cytosol here to make things happen. So what is the role of the cytosol? Well, it turns out that cytosol contains initiation factors identified as cytosol components. There are actually several and they are understood in some detail. So if we mix 30S subunit extracts, isolates, with initiation factors or IFs isolated from cytosol with a real messenger RNA that's been made radioactive so we can follow what's going on, we get this association. So what do these initiation factors do? Well, one of them enables the 30S to bind to the messenger RNA. The binding is H bonding. The beginning of the mRNA, a sequence called the Schein-Delgarno sequence, discovered by these two guys, near the 5 prime end of a message, recognizes complementary bases in the 16S ribosomal RNA of a bacterial small subunit. Initiation factors facilitate that interaction. Some initiation factors are actually there to prevent the 50S subunit from binding, and you'll see why that's necessary. 